Hello and welcome to Cruise Fun. My guest today is Dr. Ben Peary. He's the Director of Operations for the Democratic Progressive Party, but he's also the Executive Chairman of Beata Holdings Limited. Welcome, Dr. Peary. Thank you very much, Joe. I would like to know more about you. Where were you born? I was born in Cholo District, in the mm -hmm. southern part of Malawi. Okay. Uh, I'm told it was 1978, uh -huh. on the 24th of August. Mm -hmm. You don't August. have a birth certificate? I don't. Uh, <laughs> we don't we have do not have the luxury of having <laughs> one. So you, you, you believe in what they say. Yes. yes. Both your parents from Cholo or? My father was from Chiladzulu. Okay. Uh, Chiladzulu, uh, they call it Chisowi, the village, Tia Kadewere okay. in Chiladzulu. Okay. And my mother comes from Magomba village, Tia in Chilamuna Cholo. Okay, and right. that's where I grew up. That's where you grew up. Yes. That's where you basically spent most of your childhood. It is, yes. Uh, where did you do your education, your primary school and secondary school and stuff like that? I, I had a lot of movements yes. uh, for uh, a reason that um, my mom was working mm -hmm. with the government. Yes. And uh, my father uh, left my mom when I was two. Oh, really? Yes, when I was two, uh, it's, it's a long history, yeah. died along the way. Uh, but uh, my mom got married again. So ah, okay. there were a lot of movements. Okay. Yeah, so we moved from Cholo to Jaladzulu and then to Cholo again. Mm -hmm. uh, as a result, there were quite a lot of movements in terms of primary education. Okay. So I started with uh, Najipere Primary School, which okay. is right at the Boma. Yeah. And then moved to Jaladzulu Primary School. Mm -hmm. I moved again to... Uh, Nansato Primary School, again in Tiolo, mm -hmm. and came to do my uh, final Standard 8 uh, exam mm -hmm. at Chiladzuru Primary School. Okay. From there, I went to Tiolo Secondary School. Mm -hmm. That's why I did uh, my secondary education okay. to Form 4. Okay. Uh, on Form 4, I did not do as expected. Uh -huh. Uh, so I had to write again because yes. I really wanted to score well. Yes. So I went back and, uh, and, and I think I wrote the exam again at Chichiri Secondary School. Mm -hmm. Now, after that, mm -hmm. there were, uh, I think I was, uh, as I was drawing towards uh, uh, my secondary education, mm -hmm. my mother was forced to retire. Okay. And uh, at that point in time, my stepfather died as well. Oh, sure. So we really had a tough uh, time mm -hmm. to cough up quite mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Uh, to the extent that our school fees then was uh, 64 kwacha, not 64,000, but to, 64 to, to get the 64 kwacha. It was a hassle. It was a mountain. Yeah. When I was uh, uh, about to do my tertiary education, mm -hmm. I had to make a decision because we were seven in our family. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then uh, our firstborn is a, is a, is a, is a lady. Mm -hmm. So it was either I proceed with education and my young brothers suffer or I should do sacrifice on their behalf. So you are the second born? Second born. Okay, the but first obviously being a, big, being a man, yeah, you, yeah. You, you, you automatically become the first born. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, so I became the father of the family. Yeah. And then I had to decide which way do I want to go. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, I had uh, enrolled at Poly okay. Management Center, mm -hmm. and then uh, as I was getting into the second year, mm -hmm. I decided to drop out because I couldn't pay even school fees. Oh, my goodness. So after that, I t tested life mm -hmm. uh, because I really did not know what to do, mm -hmm. where to go. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, one thing I knew was I had a vision, and I knew where I was going. Mm -hmm. So I started off by working in an Indian shop. Okay. In Limbe. As, as, as a, a shop attendant as and then cleaning in the shop, sweeping and giving uh, giving out. In Limbe? Assisting, yes. At this time you were still staying with your parents? No, 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 no. You I had already moved, moved out. out and I was staying in BCA Hills uh, right at uh, Makoha, close to Makoha. There was a boys' quarter there. Yes. And I was sleeping right on the floor. I did not have even a mattress. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but all I wanted was to make sure my siblings get the education. Get an education. Yeah, so um, I worked for a bit in that shop, in that Indian shop. On the side was I was doing some business wherever possible. Mm -hmm. Difficult though. Yeah. But I managed to break through, mm -hmm. uh, at least from that level, Yes. to, to, to another level a bit, mm -hmm. uh, when the Indian was now moving back to the UK. Okay. So he asked me to, to help him sell some of his property. Okay. 
So I remember well and very well that then in 1997, 98, the general manager of ADMAC was Mr. Edward Sawiringera, who is an ambassador in America. So mm -hmm. when I went there to sell these things, he asked me, he said, no, 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 I think I know you. You were with my daughter at school. So I said, yes. How come you're doing this? So I said, I can't afford school fees and other things. So I had to drop out. So he said, okay, let's make a deal. Out of helping you, you go and negotiate on my behalf. I want A, B, C, D things here. From the Indian? From the Indian. Okay. Whatever difference comes out of there is your money. That, that's your profit? Yes. So I had to do all I could. <laughs> I went there, talked to an Indian, and you know at times how hard they are. Yes, oh yes, they're but, very uh, aggressive business. Yeah, yeah, but I think he was against time. He was racing against time as well. Yeah. So he accepted. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll be shocked that I had my first 5,000 kwacha. Wow. And that was a lot of that money. That was a lot of money Oh, at that, that time. was a lot of money. I'm uh, in out of excitement. I bought a mattress, and you know this mattress, not the Roble mattress. <laughs> the, it was the mattress that had all these uh, uh, cotton yes. inside, and it's so yeah. heavy it that heavy. if you if it gets wet, you can't use it anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my face. Yeah, like I'm tired set. of sleeping on the on the No, floor. no, 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 I can't do it. This anyway. time I'm sleeping on the mattress. I'm sleeping on the mattress. So you bought a mattress. I bought a mattress. A I bought set? a sofa set, and I was so ambitious. I bought a carpet as well. From five thousand. From five. No, no, no. But there was my business capital there as well. <laughs> so I, I, I that was the end that. of my uh, shop attendant job. Yes. So this money plus the five hundred kwacha that the Indian gave me. Yes. Uh, formed a capital. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, selling uh, empty sacks by Universal. There they sell empty sacks, so uh -huh. I could get those ones. In trying to run away from uh, friends who had poly there, I could not go through poly. <laughs> so I would go through the railway line. You know, there's a railway line that goes up to uh, Waterboard. So the, they would say, that guy who we're with, Aha, is he's so now the selling look at him, That's what he's doing. So I would go there up to Limbe, sell <laughs> them. And after that, then uh, did a number of things. Yes. Eventually, my young brothers, at least, yeah. uh, were making progress. Okay. Until when I started going to Zimbabwe, South Africa, yeah. and then I at least I got a start. So you started doing business across the borders? That's right. Finally, I think in the year 2000, mm -hmm. I got an opportunity to go to the UK. Uh -huh. So all I did was to pay for school there. Okay. I managed to get a school. But to be honest with you, I, my intention was not really to go to and do school. Okay. You I was going to alleviate my Your poverty. poverty. <laughs> yes, uh, because I was told that at least... Uh, uh, there was a myth that whoever goes to the UK becomes rich. Oh my rich. God, that, that was is the heaven. Time. Oh yeah. yes. So I worked hard, and then I paid for school and did everything, and then left. Yeah. Yeah. So having done that, mm -hmm. uh, I enrolled with uh, what you call Open University in the okay. UK. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, did uh, my uh, a, a diploma, mm -hmm. then advanced diploma there, yeah. and then mm -hmm. uh, managed to get a job with uh, what they call. Uh, Barclays Bank, mm -hmm. but under Document Management Center. Okay. So this, I was the systems administrator there. Okay. And then uh, I had another job where I was doing uh, printing mm -hmm. with a printing company. Oh. Yeah. So that's why I've got Beata Printing. Ah, I see. But well, now, before we get carried away, I want to hear more about your experience in that's the right. UK. Yes. But let's talk about music because yeah. uh, that's another important element of this program. I want us to know about you. Do you listen to music? I do. Yes. What I kind of music do you like listening uh, to? To be honest, gospel music. Oh, really? Is what I go for, yes. Oh, is it? Yes. Why gospel music? Is, is it? I, I, to, be, to be fair, I have uh, been a Christian for some time. Oh, really? You know, you can live without food, but you can't live without hope. Mm -hmm. And where I got my hope was in the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's what kept me going. What church do you go to? Or? I am a Calvary Family Church member. Ah, I, see. I, I have been since 1992. So the first song, what is it going to be? Uh, probably, it is. It is well with my soul. Ah, it is definitely well with your soul. It is my, definitely. It is definitely well with, with your soul. soul. Yeah, definitely. Uh, who, who, who is doing this track? Because it's, it's a very Bucci, popular. Bochi is. Ah, okay. Yeah, the, the Nigerian that, reggae artist. Yes. And, so uh, there it is, Bochi. It is well with my soul. That's the best choice for my guest today in Cruise 5, Dr. Ben Pitt.
morning I'm a right Declaring the counsel of the Almighty One I bring you good news where you cannot refuse It is well, it is well It is well in the name of Jesus It is well with my soul today The Spirit says to my spirit It is well, it is well This is Cruise 5 and my guest today is Dr. Ben Peary. He is the Director of Operations for the Democratic Progressive Party. He is also the Executive Chairman of Beata Holdings. He says he spent some time in the UK. Why did you decide to come back to Malawi? Yes, that's where everything started. When I was there, uh, life was tough yes. until 2004. Okay. When late President May's so rest in peace, mm -hmm. came into power, mm -hmm. he introduced the subsidy and other things and the economy started picking up. Yes. Now, because we had good harvest, mm -hmm. prices of commodities in Malawi, which is really controlled by uh, agriculture products, mm -hmm. Lowered down a bit. Mm -hmm. As a result, I was able to save a lot of money because mm -hmm. I wasn't. I was no longer sending money here okay. for food and other things. Uh -huh. So my life as well is down a bit there. Mm -hmm. Now, in 2007, mm -hmm. there was a problem in Malawi: mm -hmm. the Section 65 versus the budget. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, so yes. the opposition wanted the priority to be given to Section 65. Yes. And the John government. Temple. It was John Temple. It was John Temple. Section 65 first. first, and the budget. <laughs> now, there was an outcry in Malawi, but at that point in time, really, people could not stand up and fight. Yes. Uh, it was a pain to me, mm -hmm. because I thought if the budget is not passed, then quite a lot of uh, social services will be cut, mm -hmm. because the government cannot fund. Mm -hmm. And I would have been a victim, because here are my siblings, here are my people, and that uh, all they know is that I would support them. Mm -hmm. And then if we've got a situation where the government is not, uh, is not able to do it, we've got a problem. Mm -hmm. So I thought if I can't do it, nobody's going to do it. So I decided that I was going to resign from my job, come to Malawi and uh, fight. For Section 65? Uh, for, 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 for the, the budget, budget, yes. I decided I never so knew anyone. So you believed anyone. that we needed to talk about the budget before we talked about Section That's 65. what I believe, and I still do. Mm -hmm. So I decided that th I call this quit, mm -hmm. go back to Malawi until the budget is passed. How I was going to do it, I don't know, because I left Malawi without a name. Nobody knew me, nobody knew my father, nobody knew where I was coming from. But the president knew you. He never knew, he never did. So he never did, I, I didn't know anyone. But I believed that I needed to come because at that point in time, poor people were That bleeding. was daring. It did was. you have any connections in the political circles? I never time? had. I never had, but I, I felt the nation was bleeding. So at that point uh, how did you how did you make it? You came here. How did did you manage to achieve your goal? I did. I think that's. The I did. Question. I did uh, because I left and came back, and when I got back here, uh, I I had uh, two of my friends who are lawyers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they were not married. They are married now. They okay. are they are a couple now. Uh, I told them what I'd come here for, so I resigned with the bank. Luckily, the bank told me we're giving you. A year. Mm -hmm. If you want to come back, you can always, you can come, always back. come back. Yeah, uh, but then they must when have I liked you, then. Yeah, they, they did. Mm -hmm. And then I was doing a bit of a business, so I had a bit of a saving. Okay. Remember, I had no other income yeah. other than that. The business so when I do. came, I told these guys, and they said, "Okay, the best way to go is to put up a petition. So you must petition Parliament." Uh, so, but they said you must have uh, sufficient interest on the matter. Mm -hmm. So I said I do, and I've got my reasons. Yeah. So they said, "Okay." 
are you able to mobilize some civil society mm -hmm. just for their to put their signature mm -hmm. on the petitions? I said yes, but by then I didn't know anyone. So really, you, started, you went. About so I went, people. and I think the first person I approached was Emma Chanika. Yeah. I approached Emma and she was over the moon. She said, mm -hmm. that's exactly what we're waiting for. Okay. So she did, and then I approached Billy Banda, mm -hmm. who did as well, mm -hmm. and then it went on. The very night, Emma went to television Malawi. And he said, the Malawians get ready. They are some guys that have come from the UK, mm -hmm. meaning me, and they are here to fight. We, we are going to have our budget. So. The next morning, the hype really was raised. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know how, yeah. but it was raised, and I then said that I'm coming to Lilongo to present the budget. Mm -hmm. And then the parliament, parliamentary office building was, I think, in Mbera House. Yes. By the time I was getting to Mbera House, because of the radio announcements and the TV, there were, so there many were people thousands there. of people. I'm talking about thousands of people. And when I arrived there, I couldn't believe what was happening. I was almost like a hero. And I, when I looked, I said, is this me? They, they said, this guy is the one That's who's going to give us the gonna budget. That's a guy that is going to bail us out. So we went, presented our, our, our petition. For the very first time for me to get into the State House, that was the time because Parliament was meeting at, at State House. So we were going there to see what was happening, and then the fight went on. But remember, I knew nobody. Mm -hmm. But the colleagues that I had, the Mavodo Bamuses, yes. the uh, Collings Magalasi, yeah. the Bile Bandas, knew the who were who was in yeah. town yeah. that time. Yeah. So we formed a committee and I was the national chair. Okay. Uh, I believe Bire Banda was the vice, as Sudi Sulaimana was the secretary, Collings Magalas was something. So we were well organized mm -hmm. and we were able to address meetings. We remember we did one at Mjamba okay. and then we ordered people to come here and come somewhere in Lilongwe. And it was, it, it, it had spread all over. Mm -hmm. So there was too much pressure until we got the budget. So the final thing is we managed to get the budget. Tell me about your involvement with the Democratic Progressive Party. Uh -huh. How and where did it begin? Okay, this is where it began. Um, the, after the budget we're talking about, mm -hmm. there was another small issue mm -hmm. uh, to do with whether Malusi was eligible to contest uh, or not mm -hmm. in 2009. Yes. So... My belief then was that the government was trying to put up uh, a knife under mm -hmm. so that at least then they, they tell Mulusi that you can't contest mm -hmm. on the nomination day. Mm -hmm. And then meanwhile, Mulusi was campaigning. Mm -hmm. So I said under conflict management, which was one of the things that I dealt with, but, but one of my, my, uh, my, my interest, mm -hmm. I said it can't be because by the end of the day, we're going to have problems. This, you'd have spent money, you'd have done ABC, that sparking fire. Mm -hmm. Why don't we, you tell him now that you're not eligible. Who are you telling this? Electoral Commission. Okay. Yeah, so there was that battle. So all I said, the statement I remember to have said was, I will seek legal opinion on the matter. Why were you so interested in that matter? I mean, you could have... Because the biggest capital we have in Malawi is peace. Mm -hmm. Immediately we get out of this peace, we're gone. So, that statement alone, the UDF thought that I was working for the government to stop Malusi from contesting. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the government thought that I was working for Malusi to sort the puzzle, mm -hmm. whether he can stand or not. Mm -hmm. And there was all this uh, uh, sort of uh, running up and down from this, from this. Uh, but I was not involved with anyone. I remember, I didn't know anyone. Mm -hmm. So when I left the country... But you were doing this deliberately to get the attention of the politicians. Uh, even the attention was not my interest. I, I, uh, to but me, it was about... Game, you knew that if I move these pieces right, I'll get the attention of Trust me, probably God did. But for me, my interest was uh, an ordinary Malawian in the village. Mm -hmm. Because remember, if politicians... It is never the army that starts wars mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. No army has ever started a war. It is politicians that starts wars. Mm -hmm. And now if there is nobody to guard against that, we've got a problem. And if nobody is standing up, I've got to stand up because I know the benefits of it. So I left and went back to the UK a bit. Mm -hmm. When I was coming back, the UDF, I'm told it was the UDF, generated a James Ben Piri. Mm -hmm. It was a fake guy, he never was there, <laughs> who rushed to the court. <laughs> who rushed to the court and said, uh, we, we want to know ABC. I remember he was being presented by <laughs> Christopher Jukanya. Did Jukania. he look like you? 
No, no, no. They just knew the name, and the person was never even there. But you're not James Ben Piri, are you? No, no, I'm not. I'm ben Piri, ben Piri, but all they wanted was to make sure that my name is there, <laughs> because when the court called for him, he never appeared in court. Interesting times. Uh, let's listen to your next choice. What would your next song be? Uh, my next choice would be Ndidi. Ndidi? Yes. Oh, fantastic Faith song. Musa, yes. That guy is brilliant. He is excellent. Faith Musa, Amayen and Ndidi. That's the next choice from my guest today in Cruise 5, Dr. Ben Piri. This is Cruise 5. It's a program where we get to talk to different interesting people. And my guest today is Dr. Ben Piri. He is the Director of Operations for the Democratic Progressive Party. He is also the Executive Chairperson of Beata Holdings and uh, so many other things. We are getting to know more about his involvement in the Democratic Progressive Party. It has been said several times that you are related to the Mutarikas. No, 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 no. There's no blood relationship. There is no blood you. relationship. Professor Mutarika used to be a visiting professor at Oxford, Oxford University. Yes. So you'd go there, listen, and all sorts of things. And it ends there. Mm -hmm. When I got here in November, it's when we first met. Mm -hmm. And when we first we met, he told me that people were interested in him running. Mm -hmm. in Cholo, that's, that's, uh, uh, the now president. The, 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 president. Yep, the now president. So I, I said, okay, let me try and do a research in your area, if you can make it or not. Remember, he had just come in, in 2007 as well. So I went there, did a research, and then uh, got back and gave him the report that I had. That was the beginning of my journey with him. But you did you know the former president, the late... Uh, uh, Bingo Mutarika. I never did. Did never you relate did. well with him? Did you? It was a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. That is after I met uh, uh, his young brother. Yeah. 
uh, our journey started. Okay. We campaigned together okay. in Cholo East mm -hmm. for, for this member of parliament thing. Mm -hmm. Typical of uh, people here in Malawi, they went to the brother and lied a lot against me. Uh -huh. uh, so it was a mixed bag. There were other days that were good. There were other days that were really bad. So you would say you were closer or you are closer to Peter than Yes, him. I can't really claim mm -hmm. to have been. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, I, I, I was close to uh, Madame Kalista Mutarika okay. in a way. Okay. Uh, that is after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was our journey. So... Um, so what, how, what was your introduction to politics? What, my what introduction you... to politics really was my uh, relationship with Professor Motareka. Okay. Now, because he was going to run mm -hmm. as a member of parliament, okay. and then I was going to help him do that, mm -hmm. that automatically made me a politician. Mm -hmm. Because then I had to organize everything. I was okay. almost like the campaign manager. Yes. So I would say, you were always we there. do this, we do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that pulled me into politics. Uh -huh. But my main, really when I really got into mainline politics is when the late president passed. Mm -hmm. Because remember, a lot of people left the party. Yes, yes. So we needed to have more people to begin to run. Okay. So that was where I can say I really went into politics full time. You ended up working at the State House. Yes. Very close to the president. Yes. Tell me what your experience was like. Because you didn't live ceremoniously. Yes, uh, remember that uh, to state house was automatic. Mm -hmm. uh, automatic being that we won the yeah. election. Yeah. But the, the background to it is that uh, having joined the mainstream politics yes. because of the incident that happened, ordinarily I was just a, me a, a, a mere personal assistant to the president. Okay. Okay. You didn't have a particular position. I did in not the party. have a particular position. Throw not even in the neck. Throughout the bingo administration, I never was. Yeah. Okay. But when this, it necessitated that I have a position okay. so that I coordinate the campaign and everything. Mm -hmm. That's where my position came in. Mm -hmm. Now, when as we director were, of as director of operations. They call you field marshal. Others do. But what my is position, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I just read it as well. But uh, really, I was responsible for every operation okay. that uh, the party, the direction and everything the party had to take. Mm -hmm. Now. Because we won, mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't think then the president would say, now that we've won, uh, you go. Mm -hmm. So, you had to so we had to go together to state house. Okay. The experience is good. I must say, the president and I mm -hmm. really worked very, very well. Very close and very well. Do you think that kind of um, threatened the relationship the president might have enjoyed with the other members of the party or maybe the, uh, the ministers and people like that? A possibility would be there, but I wouldn't want to speculate. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing for a fact is that I am not an accident waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. What I am today has been out of uh, uh, a vision, mm -hmm. hard work, mm -hmm. and planning. Mm -hmm. As a result, I will not move because somebody say move. I will not jump because somebody said jump. My programming is my programming and God. So when time came that I must leave State House, it was it. Did time come or things happened and then you had to leave? You know that Because people say you became too powerful. Way too powerful for the comfort of some of the cabinet ministers. Did I become, when we, we got into power, or I was doing what I was doing even when we were in opposition? When you were at State House. Uh, prob anyway, it depends the word too, how people want to break it down. You were almost like a minister. Uh, I don't know. Uh, one thing that I know for sure, the responsibility that I had when we, I got into President Mutarika's life, then uh, Professor Mutarika in 2007, there is nothing that changed. Why did you have to leave State House? I had to because I thought the time has come. Remember, the children of Israel were supposed to have gone to Egypt for seven years. They overstayed, and as a result, they ended up doing works that they were not supposed to. So, and a man, every man, unless you're an accident waiting to happen, every man must plan in life, and you must know when to quit. If you don't know when to quit, you've got a problem. Now, I did not leave the Democratic Progressive Party. I left the State House position that I had. 
That's what I did. And I said, I'm better off out to do some other things. It was time for me. After all, these are positions of trust. Other people should take over as well. Mm. Uh, remember, this is public money. So some people should enjoy it as well. My guest today in Cruise 5, Dr. Ben Piri, your third song. My third song would be Mighty Man by Jimmy the Summit. The Summit. Yes. Oh my God, that yeah. guy is killing it. That's right. That guy is massive. He is massive and remember that our everyday life is about the battle. The Bible says war unto the world because the evil one is there. You must have got to fight. People cry watching that, that guy. But definitely, he performs wonderfully. Jimmy, the psalmist, Jimmy D, the psalmist, powerful song. Let's, let's say this one. Mighty man of war, Lion of Judah, we bow down and worship you. Yahweh, Yahweh, come and do what only you can do. with Cruise 5 and my guest today is Dr. Ben Piri. He is the Director of Operations at the DPP and is also the Executive Chairperson of uh, Beata Holdings Limited and people say he's the Prime Minister of Malawi. Have you heard that said before? I have heard but remember we are living in a society that has been affected among others by own belief. Mm -hmm. Our national anthem, among others, mm. spells, spells it out. 
hunger, disease, and envy. So what, which one of those leads to you being prime minister, hunger, uh, disease, or envy? Uh, probably one would spell out which one belongs <laughs> to him if they have said that. I've never been a prime minister. I don't know the terms of reference for a prime minister, but I am a driver. No, no. The thing is, it is said that the president cannot make a decision without consulting you. But I've been out of state house. He's right hand man. I have been out of state house for a year and nine months. Mm -hmm. Remember, they used to say that. Mm -hmm. Now, I left state house. There are others that still are paranoid mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the name Ben Peary freaks them out. Why does the name Ben Peary freak people out? I'll tell you what. I am a life person. Mm -hmm. I'm an iron person. Mm -hmm. God made me that way. If I wasn't, trust me, I would have been back in Cholo plucking tea. Mm -hmm. But I decided never to allow anyone to introduce me to me. I know where I'm going and I know who I am. So whether they get freaked out, sorry to them, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm Ben Peter, I'm still moving on. How often do you talk to the president after State House? After State House, we do talk once in a while. Uh -huh. Once in a while, I can't determine how But I mean, he's, a, he's your confidant, wouldn't you say? Uh, whether he, he is or he was, I'm not sure. Mm. But uh, the way we used to talk then is not the way we talk now. Obviously, okay. dynamics have changed. Mm. Then we were, uh, I had an official position. Okay. Uh, we needed to be talking time and again. Now there is no reason why he really has got to call me other than calling his son. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so whenever it pleases but him. Does, does he open up to you, call you and talk about things that are bothering him? I mean, as, as a father would to his son, as you put it. Uh, because, uh, you know, sometimes <laughs> you just need someone who can listen to you. Look, I mean, this is the man we've been together for the last 10 years. Mm. Uh, obviously, when he calls, we discuss things. We could laugh about the past and mm. those sorts of things. I mean, we've got history. Remember, I was about, uh, I was almost killed during the, the fight. Remember, he was arrested and he was in jail. We've got a lot of things to talk about. We won, and I personally decided, regardless of everything that we did, regardless of the pains that we had, I'm out of it. Ah, uh, you're not out of it. So it is not about no, you're not out of things. it. You still. You still dip your hand in the, in the pot. Somehow. I'll tell you what, that's a thing that is killing Malawi. Mm -hmm. Until we change operating on perception, Malawi will never change. You know, there are times that I have heard people discussing Ben Piri when I'm there, because a lot of people do not know me, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. Remember, by 2007, nobody knew who Ben Piri was. But the way they introduced me to other people or wanting to introduce me to me mm -hmm. puzzles me at times mm -hmm. as if we've grown up together. They have seen what it is there and everything. But by the end of the day, what I'm saying, the Ben Piri that you're talking about is me. Mm -hmm. So I don't get engaged in any activities to do with government, mm -hmm. let alone the party. Mm -hmm. It's just about now that we're not going to borrow. What I enjoy a lot mm -hmm. is getting head on with the opposition. Mm. I don't fight in fights. In fights mm. is not my take. You like you like taking the opposition. Me on. is one one. Mm. Let's stand there, plan your thing and let's face each other. Mm. That's where I'm good at. So you must be rearing up for twenty nineteen now. Oh hundred and twenty. You're really excited that twenty nineteen is coming. Very up. excited and I am just watching how this thing is being operated. How are you getting how are you getting involved in twenty nineteen? I, I hear you might stand for a parliamentary position in your constituency. Uh, yes, I might. Mm. Yes, I, I, I. But my priority mm. is uh, certainly the presidential campaign. You want to be president or what? No, no, the presidential campaign of the president. The, my president. Who? Uh, Professor Mtarika. I can't let that campaign go. He's uh, standing again in 2019. He's got to. He's got to. He's entitled to two terms. And you are behind, you are fully behind him. I will do all I can. Within my powers, within what God blessed be with, to make sure that he returns the position. And certainly he will. I mean, he d there is no option. Wouldn't you advise him to, 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 to stand down and let somebody... W why should around? I do that? Every Malawian, every president is entitled to two terms. Why him stand one term and go? Well, After so all, if he does, then who? If At the said, moment, there is nobody. If he said, I don't want to stand again, what would you... What would you I would persuade say? him to go on. <laughs> why would you do that? I would that? persuade him to do that because until God brings an alternative, at the moment, there is no alternative. Because there's no alternative, Malawians will suffer. 
It is for the good of Malawians that this president continues to run this country and finish up his term. Then probably the president will bring up alternatives to run. Is he the good alternative? Though? An excellent one. So you're fully confident in the president's capability of running this country? You are? I am. Remember, <laughs> remember this. A country is never run as a company. A country is never run as a family. The fact that I've run Beata does not qualify me to run a, 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 a country. Mm -hmm. The fact that I've run a church does not qualify me to run for presidency. It is and it detects presidential, uh, God-given uh, 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 authority to do that. There are foundations that must be laid. There are issues that must be sorted out within for you to run. And this president has got all the qualities to do that. People say the current president is not taking this country anywhere. They say things are not functioning in this country. They say he is not responsive. He is not quick to act. He is slow and he is watching this country crumble. That's people. Because you're saying people. And uh, we have always done that. I'll tell you this. In 1979, on 21st of April, President Obasanjo received a letter from the Emir of Dubai. And in the letter, the Dubai Emir wrote and said and asked for a loan, $20 million, for Dubai to, to, to develop. In his own handwriting, Obasanjo said, a good for nothing, Dubai. How are you going to pay me back? He never gave them the money. Down the line, Dubai is much, much better country than Nigeria. You know the reason why? Self-belief. In Malawi, we don't believe in our own people. We believe in an outsider. When somebody comes there and begins to rub us, to, 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 to treat us like fools, to give us all oh, these this things, we're happy. We'll clap hands for them. That's why you'll find that a Nigeria come today, he'll be very rich than you tomorrow. A Burundi, a refugee, comes in, he will do better. We don't believe. When Ben Piri tries it, he's a fifth. He's corrupt whether you have seen or not. Mm -hmm. How many buildings are in town for foreigners? Nobody has ever, ever gone to investigate where they're getting their money, mm -hmm. including Indians. If my brother, you start tomorrow, everybody will be on you and say, why? why? We don't believe in ourselves. This country has made tremendous progress under President Mutarika. You must remember that during Bingu's time, until his demise, everybody was against Bingu. But you can testify that a lot of people have come and said, we were better off that time. Do you miss working at State House? Far from it, I don't. There's nothing that I miss. I enjoy it here. I've, I've, I've got a lot so of freedom. So you would never want to go back to work there? Not at State House. Oh, to but work? the president is still there. You'd want to maybe be in close contact with him uh, it, physically. It, there are always ways that would, that would happen. But to go back there in the office, sit down there, I, I think I'm enjoying the freedom out here. Dr. Ben Piri, that's my guest today in Cruise 5. Your fourth song. My fourth song will be Agui Miridandan oh, by Great Angels. Great Angels. Yes. Great Angels. Agui, Agui Miridandani. This is quite political, this song. It may be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this is <laughs> <laughs>
My guest today, Dr. Ben Piri, the Director of Operations at the Democratic Progressive Party, but he is also the Executive Chairman of Beata Holdings Limited, which is quite a vibrant company, as I understand. Tell me more about this company. We are a family business, mm -hmm. a family trust, and then uh, under Beata Holdings Limited, we've got uh, Nova Blanca Suites, we've got uh, Beata Printing Company, and uh, Beata Farming. Those are some of the, of the areas that we do. And uh, under Nova Blanca, we do property development, which is what we, 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 we have been doing for some time. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I run that. They have entrusted me out of trust as chairman. Mm. So I'm the executive chairman there. And that's what keeps me busy. People say you amassed a huge amount worth in under three years, between 2014 and 2017. And they find that to be very phenomenal. Did they know me before that time? Probably no. So unless somebody really says otherwise. But at the same time, I'm a miracle person. Mm -hmm. I haven't reached my destination yet. Uh, watch my space. I'm going. I will do what no man has seen. No ear has heard. Because the man behind me is a good God. Remember, when it is about God, people do not understand it. When it's about man, people understand it. In fact, the fact that it is by God, people should not understand it because that's what makes it God. So, I have I, all not, two things. Number one, I have told you in my preamble, nobody knew me until 2007. Now, between 2007 to to date, I have worked and I have uh, really gained track records are there. The time I was leaving State House, I said, let anyone who's got anything take it wherever. People have tried to do nothing until today. And I still challenge whoever, wherever has got something where they would say he corruptly got this. Or by virtue of his position then, mm -hmm. he got this. Let him do that. So it's not surprising to you that between 2014 and 2017 you became insanely rich in fact it is not between it because they don't know me mm. it is not from 2014 mm -hmm. i first had my first house in 2003 mm -hmm. in the uk mm. in the uk not in malawi the first in title, nottingham the first title of a house was not in malawi it was in the uk mm -hmm. the second one was in 2004 in chilomon fargo mm -hmm. the third one was in 2006 in uh, in 2007 in kanjeza and uh, 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 Sunnyside. Mm -hmm. So by the time I was getting into politics in 2014, you had I already had, had these eight houses on my book, the printing company still running. I, I don't think I was poor. A little bird told me that you're launching a 10 million kwacha trophy in your constituency. Mm -hmm. Was the bird right? The bird was right. 10 million kwacha? Indeed. Jai, that's... Ah, that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money indeed. It is a lot of money indeed. What's all that for? You pay back to the community. I remember I said when I was in the UK, I still was running a bus. million. Yes, that's right. I was still running a bursary, and the bursary was there, and nobody questioned. Mm -hmm. Now, what buffers people, is it the amount? When you say... 10 million. 10 million is no small money no, anywhere. No, no, in no. any currency, 10 million is no small money. My friend, that's why I've said you will never live beyond what your heart is. Mm -hmm. What your heart is, is what you will become. We are doing that and we're launching that on Sunday. What would you say to a young man who is really ambitious and probably looks up to you as a successful businessman, and as it turns out, quite a successful politician that uh, gets people freaked out. What advice did you give them about making it in life? Number of things. Number one, have a dream. Mm. Be a dreamer. Mm. Number two, guard, guard, and guard against distractors. Mm. People, people be there. The Bible says, and Joseph had a dream, his brothers hated him. To the extent that I, I don't get puzzled when people hate one who's mm -hmm. got a dream. Mm -hmm. Number three, hard work. There is nothing. The Bible talks about laziness. The Bible says in Proverbs, a little sleep, a bit of slumber, and poverty shall be your permanent enemy. The reason why a lot of people are in poverty is because they enjoy wasting time talking about Ben Piri instead of working. 
Number four, I would say be a giver. There is no two way about it. The reason why you find in every shop an Indian with coins to give is because it's a biblical principle. Give and it shall be given back to you. And it has got its own recipe. Press it down, shaken together, running over. Mm -hmm. And men shall give unto your bosom. That's what the Bible says. Regardless of whichever religion you are. Now, be a giver. When you're a giver, God gives you back. Tell me about your family. Um, I, I know you're married now. Do, yes, do you sir. have any children? Uh, we have two children. Okay. Uh, my first daughter is Tapiwa. She's okay. 14. She's in Form 4. All right. And uh, my second born is Novahiwa. Mm -hmm. uh, is uh, one year and uh, nine months. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife is Twami. Mm -hmm. uh, my lovely wife, a God-fearing woman. Mm -hmm. uh, she's uh, always there for me. And I love her a lot. Uh, I've got, uh, we were four brothers. I lost two on a car accident last year or oh, two. Sorry to hear uh, so we are two now, myself and uh, Martin. Mm -hmm. And then we've got three sisters. Uh, by God's grace, at least all of them are independent. Each of them have done school, mm -hmm. which was my dream. As I've said, I'm a dreamer. Mm -hmm. So at least each of them has got a minimum of a first degree. So I'm happy because God really gave us what we want. And I must mention as well, this politics that we have, I am a descendant of John Gray Kufa. That's our great grandfather. Oh, is he? So we are not politicians by default. It is in the blood. It mm. flows. It is. So there's, there's the blood of John Gray Kufa running in your time, veins. Big time. Big time. So that's, that's, that's a family. Tell me about what you like doing in your free time. My free time, which I don't call free, is You church. never have free time. It's church. Church is... It's either I'm in the office or I'm at church. You seem to mention church quite a lot. Yes. You're yeah, very, you, you, are, you, you, you must be a strong Christian, I guess. I, I am, and I am not ashamed at all. I am a strong Christian. I believe in God. I believe in, the, uh, in, 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 in Christ Jesus. Do you live by Christian principles? I try by his mercies. Mm -hmm. Remember, we are saved by grace. So I try to live by that. That's why I can stand tall mm -hmm. and say, search me, O oh God. Mm -hmm. And I can stand tall and say, Job, search me. I can stand tall and say, public, search me. Because I try. Remember, no matter how far God gives you progress, mm -hmm. never forget the days of small beginning. Mm -hmm. I was an usher in the church, mopping in the church, mm -hmm. cleaning chairs in the church. And it is from there that God took me mm -hmm. to begin to carry Apostle Mbewe's bag. Mm -hmm. And it is from there that God promoted me into carrying President Mutarika's bag. So God will never promote you from nothing. You've got to be doing something and God will increase you from there. Tell me about your lowest moment in life. Something that you look back and you say, I think things were not fine here. I think this was my saddest moment. Yeah. What do you look back to? My saddest moments are two, number one, mm when my when i lost my two brothers mm. in uh, the car accident yes these are That's youngsters tragic. that i trained these are youngsters that were really coming up in fact the other one had a graduation i think the accident happened in may he had a graduation in 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 june so these are youngsters that i was looking at i mean the responsibilities that i had will be sharing and then they're gone mm. that's, that's 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 tragic that's that's tragic mm -hmm. number two to be honest with you was when uh, president mutarika died that must have been a very tragic oh, moment. That, that must have been a, a very tragic moment. That was a tragic moment for me. My guest today, Dr. Ben Piri, I would like to wind up by asking you a couple of questions which you can ons only answer yes or no. The only first question that you'll have to answer in full is what is your full name? My full name is Ben Malunga Piri. Do you have any tattoos? Now, do you ever want to be president of Malawi? Not sure. Do you have any piercings? No. Do you have children? Yes. Have you ever shot a gun? Yes. Have you ever cried over someone? Yes. Have you fallen in love before? Yes. Have you killed a chicken before? Yes. Have you gotten into a fight before? Yes. Have you gotten any surgeries? No. Have you ever been hospitalized? Yes. Have you donated blood? Yes. Have you ever smoked weed? No. Would you smoke weed? No. Have you ever drunk alcohol? No. Would you drink alcohol? No. Have you ever broken someone's heart? Yes. Have you had a crush on someone? Yes. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Many thanks. <laughs> <laughs>
so, <laughs> Can you just say yes, no, yes? <laughs> and then you're taking me to the corner. All those questions are rubbish. You knew that you knew where you're going. <laughs> your last song, though, you didn't select your last song. <laughs> Tell me your last song. My last song will be Zico by Patience Namadingo. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Dr. Many Pierre. thanks. Thank and you. Wish so. you well. <laughs> Tiko, oh, oh, 